So this, the last one, was the one that your wife made for you, which is uh, mm-hmm. very fashionable, actually. I, I like that. Um, and then the, the people who don't have someone like your wife. Right. Make so one for this them. is for the novice like me who, <laughs> who doesn't have sewing skills. So. Um, and uh, the Surgeon General showed a video of this, so I, I'll give him credit for uh, this quick and easy tip. So you take a square of fabric and you fold it in half in on itself a couple of times. And then you can take a couple of rubber bands and sort of fold it towards the middle like that. And now you sort of have a quick and easy um, cloth face covering that loops around the ears and uh, serves the same purpose. Lovely, that's, that's a quick one. The same thing goes with that. You need to be laundered separately mm-hmm. and uh, the same thing not touching it. And um, if you can get rid of the rubber bands, I get a new one. I guess right, that yep. would be the best choice here. Well, very good. Thank you so much for bringing all these and sharing with our audience. Um, also, I wanted to ask you about the community. What has been the update within the community, Abingdon, West Virginia area, and how are we doing on COVID-19? Sure. So, uh, we still have a relatively small number of cases when you compare to large urban areas where um, there's, there's such an urgent need currently but there are sort of roughly 10 locally. Um, We have seen some early signs of community spread and community transmission. So what that means, there have been some new cases identified that were not related to travel and do not have contact with a known existing case. Um, So when you start to see community transmission, that's when you start to suspect that what you're seeing is kind of the tip of the iceberg. There are some asymptomatic people or there are some undiagnosed people that are out there. Uh, that the numbers haven't captured yet. Mm. So that is sort of uh, an alert to us that we need to be cautious. You know, we just because we don't have a large number of cases locally, we can't let our guard down and be lax. We right. need to be very vigilant to make sure that uh, the numbers stay under control. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us and the uh, uh, community, I mean, having the area community. Um, I know that at Abingdon ENT every week we have been getting an update through Dr. J that the, um, the alteration and how you have been rolling with the punches and making the best out of it and still continue to work. Everybody's showing up, uh, all the staff of Abingdon ENT is still showing up to work, allergy department, the doctors, and you guys are still going at it. And could you please share with us uh, what has been the new way of doing things this past week? For sure. You? So we've tried to do everything we can to give people the medical care that they need. Um, In a pandemic situation, one of those secondary effects is being so overwhelmed by the disease that people don't get other health care they need. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to take all the steps we can to mitigate that potential problem, make sure people still have their other health care needs addressed while we're appropriately preparing for um, the pandemic and mitigating um, the spread of that. So... Some of the changes that we've initiated, um, people are waiting in their cars for appointments now rather than waiting in a common waiting room. Mm -hmm. Um, Patients are kept as sort of single patient groups, a patient and a visitor, or a parent and a child, and no co-mingling between um, different patients. Um, Our uh, staff that are in contact with uh, patients have started wearing face coverings as Mm -hmm. well. Um, And of course, all the universal precautions and sterilizations of medical equipment continue and we're being very vigilant about uh, the cleanliness of the environment in general. But all of these things to facilitate uh, the social distancing, the appropriate wearing of face coverings and all those other measures to make it the safest environment possible to deliver the care that people continue to need. That is wonderful. Also, I've heard that, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the doctor would go in and examine the patient the nurse will be actually outside of the room. That's right, yeah, so to further decrease the proximity of people and uh, the number of people in a given space, um, we're essentially communicating with our nurses um, by uh, earbuds so that um, we have fewer people in the room and we're still able to get everything taken care of. That's incredible how you guys uh, came up with these solutions to still be able to serve the community. So you guys are in the room, the doctors are in the, in the room, communicating with the earbud, with the nurse outside, and you're still uh, seeing your patient. How about the allergy department of the clinic? How, how, how have they been coping? So um, 
Again, the elimination of the waiting room scenario, patients can wait in their personal car um, after they get their injections. And uh, we've started a trial of actually doing injections uh, in the car so that people have minimal contact with the healthcare environment. Um, and that all seems to have been going well. Um, we've also tried to convert any um, elective visits that um, don't require you know, a procedure or in-person contact to telemedicine. Oh, wonderful. Way. Yes, telemedicine. That's uh, something, another subject that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, so when you say telemedicine, what does that mean? And for someone who is right now in Virginia and um, one of our viewers in California, for example, want to uh, use this service, how they could go about it? Sure. So um, through a regular scheduling process and our staff, you can uh, request a telemedicine appointment. Um, and that is just an audio visual connection um, so that we can not only speak to you, but we can actually see patients. Uh, we can't get the same exam we could in person, but there are a lot of things that we can lay eyes on and see that um, augments the experience above and beyond what you would just have with a phone call. And fortunately, one of the things that um, gov the government has done since all this started was to peel back some of the restrictions on telemedicine practice to facilitate that so we can take care of more people um, and meet those needs outside the office setting. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Hubbard, for coming out and My pleasure. Thank um, so you. willingly giving information to the, the community and our global audience. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, please visit Abingdon ENT Facebook page and send them a Facebook message. You, can, you guys always can email Dr. J at sayorb.com. And uh, again, thanks again for joining my show, The Saye Show, and see you guys next week, next Saturday. Thank you so much, Dr. Hubbard. Thank you. I would have shake your hand, but I prefer not. <laughs> <laughs> Set a good example. Oh, yes, I'm, I am uh, practicing. <laughs>